as regular viewers of Fully Charged will be aware, I quite like starting off episodes in sort of random, vaguely empty car parks. But this week's is a bit different. For a start, it's a much bigger car park and it's got an amazing vehicle in it. That is the Arrival electric delivery van and this is Fully Charged. So Patrick, thank you so much for letting us come and see what you're doing here, because it is it's spectacular. It is really exciting. I mean, I think the thing that's really struck me since I've been here is I've seen pictures of this and you just get the kind of overall thing. Oh, that looks amazing. That looks really good. When you're actually here, you then become very aware of the actual engineering challenge, the manufacturing challenge. They're like, oh my God. Because, I mean, quickly, how long have you been developing th these vehicles? So the company no started idea. in 2015, and by, by mid-2016, there was the knowledge of what we were building right. with this van. So, only a few years now. I mean, tell me, do you, do you give me a quick description of these vans then. They're, I mean, this one is obviously badged up for UPS. Yeah. It's, no it's, hiding that. Yeah. It's a, no, there's no hiding that. It's a, so, I'm presuming it is effectively a, like a skateboard design batteries in the floor, motors on by the wheels. That's right. Yeah, I mean, all of our customers have such different requirements that for right. us we build. The so are there variations of this van? You there could are, get, right, quite okay. numerous. So we have um, platform architecture on which we then quickly build different body types. And right. so um, this you see here is our first vehicle to market, 2.7 meters tall, high roof, built for walking in, walking out. So right. this is optimized for delivery operations. Yeah. So we have a few customers using this. Quite quickly after that, we move into general cargo vans, similar sort of size, different heights and lengths and then passenger vans as well. Is there, I don't even know if there's any way of judging think, you know, like the things we do with electric cars, like range, battery capacity. Yeah. What, what's its naught to 60? That's really important. It's actually quite impressive. Yeah. <laughs> we won't test that today, but very soon. Um, you know, this, this product is built for price parity. Right. So number one mission of this is to bring price parity to commercial vehicles. Right. So, I mean, the, the, so the it's logic... not going to be £60,000 more expensive than a diesel? No, because at that right. point you're putting, you're putting businesses in a position where they want to move to an electrification, yeah. but they have to pay a premium for doing so. So we all know e-commerce and our usage of, of e-commerce and expecting delivery yeah. same day, next day is completely changing our, our, our um, economy. Yeah. And I think so the growing market of commercial vans is just going to keep on going. Places a huge demand on businesses to be yeah. able to keep up with that. Um, now, when they're investing in diesel vehicles, it becomes quite a problem for them. So we're here to make sure that when customers and fleets need to move their vehicles to electric, we're here to do that and they don't right. have to pay price premium for it, right. importantly. Right. Because, I mean, the other thing we were discussing earlier today is the, the overall advantages for a business. So as an individual with an electric car, you soon learn yeah. you're saving money on fuel, if nothing else, yeah. you know, and, and on servicing. Those are the two things you're saving money on. But for a company that's got, I don't know what, 10,000 of these, the savings are in the, in the millions, aren't they? I mean, they're going to yeah. be phenomenal. I think a few years ago, the, the logic from you perceived that companies wanted to be perceived to be having electric vehicles, that, that's completely shifted now. I think right. big companies, big and small, understand that there are dramatic benefits to having electric vehicles in their fleets. So they're driven by the economics rather than the sort of greenwash. No brainer at this point. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. The, the things that are intriguing about these, are these vehicles, for instance, vehicle to grid capable? Is there, are they, is, is bi bi-directional charging yeah. is possible? Absolutely, right. it is, yeah. Because that does seem to be, make a lot of sense as the- Well, for a company like UPS that owns, as you say, tens and thousands of their vehicles, which yeah. are in their depot overnight, yes. that's a really useful asset for them. Right, okay, so that is part of your, you see that as part of your remit Absolutely, as well. yeah. I think we, we all know the benefits of taking a diesel vehicle and making it electric. That's just part one of, yeah of trying to fix some of the right the wrongs that we've put in our economy and in our yeah. environment. So, yeah. yeah, we're going to see a relatively slow transition of private vehicles to electric. You know, it's right. happening and it's yeah. in gaining speed, but it's still, it's a huge amount. But where's that understandable. Can see, yeah, absolutely yeah. understandable. For, for lots of people, they think, well, I only drive 80 miles a day, but sometimes I'll have to drive 300. Yeah. Therefore, is it worth the investment? For yeah. fleets, they're way past that. Yeah. This is out and out. The, the, the logic behind why this is a better product is comprehensive. Right. and the economies uh, just make sense to them. Yeah, because I mean, the, the actual need generally for someone who's driving one of these vans to be away from base and need to recharge is fairly low. I would imagine most of them are doing, I, I, 
I don't know, you must have the stats, but these vans don't do thousands of miles a day. No, they don't. You know, they do they relatively short. Just and the focus for, for, for fleets at the moment is urban environments. Yeah. So our customers do anything from as low as 40 miles per day per vehicle right. up to 120 right. potentially. Which is um, very doable. Very though. manageable. Yeah. Very manageable. Wow. Yeah. The, the most obvious thing that I can see with this van is yeah. the wheelbase. And I've just driven a, a I'm not going to mention the make, yeah. but you know, a big manufacturer. The wheelbase was small, it's a smaller van, yeah. but in effect, it's not that much smaller, but the carrying capacity is no. about an eighth of this. This is it. So this for us phenomenal. on this product, we start with price. Price have to achieve right. price parity or lower. Two is this should be the best product in, yeah. on the market because you're Which designing for like Tesla. Absolutely. You're not just trying to make a little extrapolation on the, on the product, you're trying to completely rethink it. Yeah. So this is about 14 cubic meters cargo capacity right. for a vehicle of the same size, um, probably looking at about 40% savings on oil efficiency on cargo. So a vehicle, any other vehicle would have to be about two meters longer to achieve the same cargo capacity. And for fleets who know that and are aware of those efficiencies, it's hugely compelling for them. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, it's so exciting. So when you go from, because at the moment you're, I can see you're just building all sorts of yeah. different ideas and things here, but once you start manufacturing, you won't be manufacturing them in this facility here. No, is so this, right? is, this is our R&D center here right. in Banbury. Um, our first van facility for, for mass production will be just down the road in Vista. Right. So not too far away. So you are building them in the United Kingdom of Great Britain and Northern Ireland. Absolutely, yeah. <laughs> Rare thing these days, I know. It is. It is. So actual yeah. manufacturing in there. So and then presumably, um, I'm assuming the bat you, you're buying batteries and then packaging them, but you're getting batteries from. So we're, we're ver very vertically integrated company. I think right. it's quite a unique thing about Arrival is that when you understand the challenges of taking, disrupting an industry, yeah. and bringing price parity, every other company is really struggling to do it. And the only way for us, to, one of the key enablers for us to do that is to be quite vertically integrated. So all of our to hardware be, sorry, say vertically again. integrated. Right. So all of our components, so drivetrain, batteries, all of our elect electromechanical systems um, and the software that controls them, we design and engineer ourselves. Right. It's the only way to really dramatically own the efficiency, but also yeah. the, the cost. And they do have, I can see they have rapid charging capabilities. They've got CCS and do. charge socket. Yeah, that's yeah. right. Yeah. And, our, and our components are really, really clever because they're used across multiple, ve multiple vehicles. Right. So our bus, actually shares a lot of the same components using the van. Right. And then the van shares a lot of components with the smaller vehicles coming through as well. So we thought we'd bring the, the van outside and have a look around it because it is I think it's important to point out this is still in, in development. This isn't the final finished uh, vehicle. This is one of their, their early prototype vehicles, but it, it's fully functional. It all works and it is, just, it is just so different, isn't it? It looks so different and it's the packaging that is really exciting. Now, all I know is I do that and then look at that. Look at that. I like that. I like that. The door opens and it's, I can get in here. I don't have to bend down, which is nice. I just go like that. Oh. Oh, 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 that is so nice. So the visibility is extraordinary at the moment. And clearly I can see what they're experimenting with, um, you know, camera rear view mirrors, because there's two screens up there that could be clearly connected to cameras and things like that. But this is, you know, this is giving us a, an idea of what the finished machine will be like. But from the point of view of a driver, <laughs> it's, it is spectacularly, brilliant visibility you know is absolutely fantastic and what is great is so you're a delivery driver and you're getting up and down look i can just stand up because i was expecting to bang my head there's loads of headroom there and you walk into the back got my package there <laughs> oh isn't that one it's number 47 it's that one you know i mean it's so easy to, to to manipulate it and you just get out the back you don't have to bend down or anything that's amazing and that is really what this is about it's about making deliveries easier so there's going to be so many, I can now tell, there's going to be so many variants of these designs. Some will have lower roofs. That's quite a high roof for a van. Um, and they'll, they'll probably pick up trucks and mini buses and all that sort of thing. So, and, you know, Andy Torbert and I both want camper vans, but we're going to have to wait a bit, I think, for that, because it would be brilliant. I think it would be amazing. So it's really, I'm really impressed with what they're doing. We're going to see these on the streets in the next sort of 18, well, next eight to 10 months. And then in the next two years, we're going to see loads of them. You know, they're going to be a very common sight. And hopefully in like five years time, no one's going to get a delivery in a diesel van anymore because those days really need to be over. You 
UPS have placed their order of 10,000 vehicles for this for this van we see here. Which is, I've got to say, that's a pretty amazing moment for a, 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 effectively a five-year-old yeah. company it to ha suddenly have an order for 10,000. It's incredible. And I think there are many, many more like that to come right. very soon. And so. Right. And you think you have the capability of manufacturing those here, You're, you can Absolutely. you can fulfill those Absolutely. orders. Absolutely. Because I mean, I think there's going to be, I know that there's going to be a lot of people watching this show that have small businesses that would go, oh, I'd love one of those. But at the moment, you if you run a plumbing company with three vans, I'm assuming you're not going to say, yes, we can sell you three vans. Uh, not just yet. No, our focus is, is B2B. Right. Um, because that really sets up our supply chain and gets the product validated with big teams. Yeah. But we are definitely moving into direct consumer sales. Oh, so if there will come a time when you, you could go into a, somewhere and buy Absolutely. one of these? Absolutely, buy a, a van directly from us. Right. Absolutely. The platform architecture exists to facilitate multiple products really quickly. Right. So what you're going to see from us over the next few years is a really rapid introduction of new configurations. Right. Height, length and, um, and types of variants. So, yeah, absolutely. We want this to be a product that can be suited for any consumer, SME, big fleet yeah. or a one-off, yeah. definitely. And what about autonomy? I mean, is that a big thing for you? Because, uh, uh, you know, I love the look of this. It's got a steering wheel. It needs someone doing that. Yeah. Yeah. Is that is that something you're working on as it well? It is, yeah. It's a key part of what we do. Um, but it really, it's almost a distraction from us at this point for, for customers like UPS. Yeah. So for vans, for example, it's, it's not a, a big focus for us right now, and certainly not for our customers. They have, the, the driver is the essence of, of the function of them delivering vehicles, yeah. um, delivering a good story. So in their depot, however, very useful. So there's a really short-term use case for advanced driving systems and full autonomy within a depot environment. Oh, so what, the driver comes back to the depot, they finish their shift, they get out of the van, and, what, and then it parks itself. Oh. Absolutely, yeah. I mean, that, that can streamline a process and yeah. operations for a company quite dramatically. A lot right. of the damage that those vehicles actually experience happens in the depot. We've got to be quite clear, we're not trying to design the human out of no, delivery process, because no. they are, um, we're actually just designing the vehicle for a really excelled user experience. I've certainly heard anecdotally from uh, delivery drivers who do drive electric vehicles now, they, they, I haven't heard one go, oh, much rather over diesel. Yeah, I miss the they noise. They all <laughs> love it. They're absolutely so grateful they've got an electric one. Yeah, and I think this is it. When you take existing diesel vehicles, make them electric, numerous benefits, no doubt about yeah. it. Yeah. But I think really just designing the vehicle from the ground up with no legacy of yeah. how we've done things in the past or what technologies and suppliers we have to use, I think we can really dramatically rethink the user experience. But I mean, experience. this makes more sense. What, what do you want in a van? You want a box that's on wheels that, is it, that it drives along efficiently. Yeah, this know? is the most efficient way to carry cargo from A yeah. to B in terms of the efficiency over the footprint of the vehicle and also cost per kilometre or cost per mile. Right. This will be the lowest way to take goods made right. to be right. of a cost per, per kilometre because the total cost of ownership can, can be really optimised with this. So we yes. get rid of painting, get rid of stamped metal. So that, yeah, because that isn't painted. It's not painted, no. Wow. It's not painted. So this is a fully composite body structure with, with a metallic frame as well. Right. So it's a combination of metallic and composites. It is brilliant. I mean, what's great is and I know this is still in development, but what is amazing is I saw a picture of this van, I don't know when, whenever you release those pictures, I went, oh, I want to see that one, that's amazing. And then you come in here and I'm sort of half dreading going, oh, it's not going to be It's good. not going to be there, is it? It's, a, it's better than I expected. It yeah. does look brilliant. So later this year, we'll bring, bring, move on to our next test phase where we bring in 20 plus vehicles, which will be on public roads doing oh. driving. So we'll start to see these vehicles right. out on our streets. I really love the idea that where, where you're, you're not going to have one gigafactory that produces vans for the whole world. It's a really key point. So yeah. really, really small, so quite small production facility. Similar to the size you see, see, see here, actually, 10,000 10, square meters or 100,000 square feet, roughly. Um, and, you know, it's just the micro factory model that we're going to be using compared to centralized semi process. It's a big enabler for us as well. So that the, the micro factory model means that we build in smaller volumes in smaller facilities, which are really fast to bring online. Right. That's the key part. So but, rather, the, but the point is you've done, once you've got one up and running, you've got an absolute, a couple Yeah, of now there are some inefficiencies in that, of course. There's, there's benefits of building one really streamlined yes. facility. And so the vehicle and the process are designed in unison from day one. That's quite unique about us. Rather than design a vehicle and then go, oh, we should start figuring out how to make this thing. Yeah. All the complexity and the inefficiency is ready in by that point. So we have to design the vehicle and the process at the same time. Yeah, yeah. Okay, well, there we go. Well, I would love to thank Patrick and the wonderful folks at Arrival for letting us have a look at this van. It is really, really interesting and exciting what they're, the work they're doing here. Um, can't wait to see the finished thing. I, I'm gonna, as soon as I can, I'm gonna order something. 
and have it delivered by an arrival van. Yes. Uh, we, they've, they're also working on buses. We're, we're going to look at those later this year. Uh, really interesting other projects that they're working on. But that's all we've got time for now. Uh, please do uh, have a look at the Patreon link. This is what keeps this show going. Or the YouTube memberships. Very easy. Click, click, click. You're all done on the YouTube page. Uh, you know, subscribe. Subscribe. Why don't you subscribe? Or even click the little uh, reminder bell thing. Dingy ding. All that stuff. All very easy. Or do nothing but just make sure you watch more episodes of Fully Charged because we really enjoy it, if you enjoy it. Thanks very much. As always, if you have been, thank you for watching.